Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this product from Zalman. It is a CNP S10X Performer Black air cooler for your CPU. It's got a recommended retail price of around about £38 and we've got links in the description just below. Okay, as you can see, we've got the box here. You can see the cooler on the box. It doesn't stand out the best because it's a black cooler on a black background, um, but you can pretty much tell what it is. You can see the fan there, you can see the cooler, and you can see some clips there, and it's pretty much all in black apart from the clips which are in silver. It would have been nice actually if those were in black to match the rest of it, but anyway. Uh, you've got the model number on there. Obviously, it's a Performer Black. Performer usually means it's a performance model, and black means, well, it's black. And it tells you the compatibility for your sockets so you've got your standards so you've got your 2066 2011s let's have a look you've got all your 11 series 1200 series and it also supports amd socket am4 only okay so it gives you a rough idea that's pretty much it for the front of the box this side of the box gives you a bit of information on there so it's telling you about the uh, turbine black fan, luxurious black fin, and it's also telling you about the direct touch uh, heat pipes basically which are on the bottom. It looks like there is four pipes going through the base on there so those will be touching directly onto your CPU. On the back of the box you've got lots of different languages so if you don't speak English you're in luck and on this side of the box it tells you a bit more specifications on there for example weights and everything like that it tells you all your different things you should need it also tells you about your socket compatibility there as well just to go over the sockets again it does support Intel LGA 2066 2011 v3 2011 1211 50 x so that's 1150 1151 1155 and so forth and am4 cpus so the power consumption is 2.4 watts the fan is controlled by pwm so that's your four pin type uh, which is your pretty standard these days the dimensions is 135 millimeters by 95 by 155 high so make sure your case does support a height of a cooler that high the materials it's made out is pure copper and pure aluminium the weight is 860 grams so that's pretty good uh, the heat distribution area is 9.271 uh, centimeter square heat pipes you've got four and the tdp is 180 watts we've got rest of the information uh, below uh, but the fan itself is 135 millimeters uh, obviously by 135 by 25 so it gives you a rough idea so let's take a look at the product and see exactly what we've got okay so this is what you've got inside the box so inside the main box you've obviously got the cooler and all this plastic not sure we really need all that plastic this day and age would have been better with cardboard or something like that to protect it um, plastic obviously save the environment and everything and then each of the parts pretty much come in plastic as well and they all come in this little cardboard box as well which it was obviously inside there we've also got a manual which tells you how to set it up it's got quite a few different pages but a lot of it uh, isn't in English so you've got multilingual in there so but it does give you picture diagrams of how to set it all up so it should be fairly easy to fit from what it looks like it seems like a pretty standard way a lot of coolers fit onto uh, motherboards these days what need a back plate so talking about back plates we've got the back plate here Ooh. It is multi backplate, so uh, for AMD or Intel, what you have to do, depending on obviously what fitting you're using it on, Intel, AMD, you have to fit one of these black inner rings or squares into the center of it, uh, depending on which you need. It does come with thermal paste in that same packet as well, which goes on the bottom of there. We'll talk about that in a few seconds. And then you've got all your different, basically little clips and so forth, and O-rings as well as screws, which you'll need to attach to this from obviously the motherboard side, as well as all the extra screws you're gonna need and brackets to screw it in. Um, it doesn't usually take too much um, to fit these things. It can look a bit daunting when you see all this, but it's usually pretty straightforward. One thing you will need to do with the actual cooler itself is remove the fan itself when you fit it to the motherboard and then put the fan on afterwards, but we'll talk more about that in a few seconds. 
Okay, so let's have a closer look at the actual cooler itself. So let's start off at the bottom. So on the base, you have got that, uh, uh, it looks like an aluminium base on there with four copper heat pipes. There is no thermal paste pre-applied, but they do come with a little sachet packet which you can put on yourself, which is good. Um, it looks pretty smooth on there, but there is like, a, you can actually feel the grooves between the heat pipe and the actual aluminium base, which uh, may be a good thing or a bad thing, but you can see the actual heat pipes itself directly touch the CPU. So it's gonna take the heat away. Um, depending on how you add it up, some people look at that and go, oh, it's actually eight heat pipes. It isn't, it's just four because it goes around in sort of a U shape. Okay, so one goes, that one goes all the way around to there and vice, and the same with all the other ones. So it's pretty straightforward. When you're mounting this inside your case, you will need to take the fan off. And talking about taking the fan off, the first thing I noticed, and even on the image, is you've got a complete black U Unit. It's a blackout model, a lot of people like complete black inside the computers, maybe with a little bit of light. They don't want any silver or shiny bits. Unfortunately, the clip, what holds the fan on, is just basically silver or chrome or aluminium, and it's not painted at all. They should have really, in my opinion, made that completely black. It's, it's the classed as the uh, performer black, which means that it should be all black, not all black with a little bit of silver there. I can let them off with a logo on the front, because generally when that's spinning around, uh, it just looks like a blur anyway, so you're not really gonna notice too much. But those little clips, I must admit, I would have preferred those being black. If we look at the actual fan itself, it's got nine blades with a sweeping design, so that should be pretty good, should be pretty uh, uh, smooth and pretty quiet, hopefully, but we'll check that in a few minutes. The top, you have got their name on there. Bear in mind, it picks up fingerprints very easily. I'll just to uh, let you know if you can see mine on there. Um, so no identity theft, anyone, please. Um, so you've got, you can see where the heat pipes go up there. You can see eight tops, obviously. That one links to that one, that one to that one, that one, that one, and so forth. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, their name in the middle. The back, you can just see the fins. You can actually see, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but you can actually see through the fins all the way through where the fan is. And then on the sides, you've basically got the grips there where you can attach the fans. There is actually a second grip on there. You could potentially add another fan on there. It would have been nice for them to include extra clips for anyone who wanted to add an extra fan on there. They didn't necessarily have to include an extra fan, but the extra clips, don't get me wrong, these will probably cost you pennies. Um, adding those in would have been giving the person an extra ability to have it on a, like a push-pull. So you could have the, that one sucking the air in and that one pulling it out. But unfortunately they don't provide those so you'd have to source those yourself. Also the fan is 135 millimeters, so it takes the full width of the actual um, the actual heatsink itself, but the top and bottom, you can see that there, there is a gap, so a lot of the air isn't gonna get passed through the fins, it's just gonna go straight over the top, and the same on the bottom as well, because air will always get pushed through the easiest way it's gonna go. So I think they could have done with something, either making the fan so it fit exact, making this a little bit taller, some sort of plastic shroud over there to force the air to go through the actual fins itself to obviously increase the airflow through the fins to keep it cooler. But otherwise, don't get me wrong, it looks all right, it looks pretty nice, it looks black. As I said, the only big thing for me is these bits here the aluminium uh, should be black. Down to testing. With all our reviews we use the same machine for doing the testing where applicable. It's the same specification with the same updates, the same programs, the same drivers and it's not even connected to the internet and the full specifications of that machine are in the description just below. Also, unlike a lot of other reviews you will see on the market, we set our speeds at 50% and 100% when we're testing. So it gives you a rough idea what sort of noise levels when the machine is running under normal operational speeds and when it's running flat out. Also, when you set things at auto, obviously it means that the fan is going to be adjusting itself and speeding it up when it's doing certain tests and slowing it down and others, giving you false results. So setting things at a specific speed, evens of playing field, between all the devices we have tested. In this first test, we're checking the idle temperature of the CPU, which basically means 
the CPU or the whole machine is sitting there doing nothing for 30 minutes. That's it, doing nothing, just sitting on its backside for 30 minutes and we get the average temperature while the fan is running at 50% speed. And we've got 25 degrees Celsius, which is actually the worst one we've actually tested up to now, normally getting around about 20, 21 degrees Celsius. In this test, we do a full load temp test, which basically we use a program called Passmark Burning Test. And what it does is it allows us to make the processor work flat out for 30 minutes, every single core working at 100%. And we tested this with the fan running at 50% speed. Here it got 63 degrees Celsius, which actually, comparing to some of the others out there, it actually performed okay. It was sort of the middle of the table, so that's not too bad. On this test, we did exactly the same thing. Again, loaded the CPU at 100%, as well as put the fan speed on the cooler at 100% as well. Tested for 30 minutes, and it got 61 degrees. Not a huge decrease in temperature, and it wasn't the coolest one out there, to be honest with you. It performed well, good enough for running an i7 processor for daily use, gaming and stuff like that, and maybe a little bit of overclocking. Talking about overclocking, what we did was overclock the processor to 5.1 GHz and run the same test again. As you can see here, a few of the processors, or should I say coolers, basically failed the testing. They either crashed or thermal throttled. The Zellman did manage to complete the tests, but it was one of the hotter ones we have tested. But saying that, for its price point, and more aimed at quiet, it's done okay in all honesty. But on to the next test, we're going to check the decibel levels. That's the, well, basically how loud it is, or at least the fan is on it. At 50% um, fan speed, we got 48 decibels, which is actually joint first uh, in our testing. So it's actually a very, very quiet cooler. So there's definitely no issues with the noise levels there. And the room decibel levels was... 45.6 so when it got 48 it was barely audible and to be honest with you you couldn't really hear it over the rest of the room on the next test same thing again but we set the fan speed running at 100 percent in all honesty it's as if the fan didn't really speed up that much and it came in at 55 decibels and if you have a look at those charts it is actually the quietest quietest one we have tested surprisingly i was actually quite surprised that it came out as number one. So that's really good, that is very, very quiet. So overall, comparing all the tests, you've got a very quiet cooler, which performs okay and well, depending on what you're asking it to do. If you're running an i7 processor, it'll do that fine. It will get a little bit toasty if you're trying to overclock it or something like that, but for general use, you shouldn't have an issue, especially if you're going to use something like an i5 or an i3 processor or the Ryzen equivalent. So overall, other than the niggly little issue with the silver bits, what you have to connect the fans on with, which I think should have been all black in all honesty. Otherwise, I think it's a really good cooler for the price. So I'm going to recommend this product.